I got one for you right off the bat. I figured you would. Give me a good Geno Ford story. I know he played at Cambridge. And he was a great player. I'm not sure he was good enough to play for your Cincinnati team, but he had a great career at Ohio and um, coaching. Mm -hmm. tell, me, tell me some stuff about Gino. I grew up with his dad. I mean, we grew up together, played bitty basketball uh, together against uh, Little League. Uh, his grandpa, Chick, was a coal miner. His grandma's name was Chubby. Uh, they moved to Cambridge when when uh, when Gene got the big Gene got the Cambridge job. Yeah. Hell of a shooter. Uh, he's a better player than he was a shooter. Yeah, good player. Yeah. They they had uh, who was the other guy from Columbus, the big kid. He was really good. He played in the league for a long time. They had a really good team. We played them in mid midnight the, one of the midnight game. Everyone. ESPN did the midnight games. Yeah. yeah. What else you want to know? Well, I was going to say, I, his, his stats were pretty good at a high U. I think a little better he, than he, yours. He was a good player. Yeah. I had hardly got in at Ohio. Yeah. yeah. He didn't play with Bacon, Maurice, and Tony. <laughs> it was really Bosco. Bosco shot it every time. Somebody mentioned that the other day to me. I don't know who it was. Um, a little concerned. Um, you're giving them, what, four four days off uh, after Stony Brook and then getting ready for league play. You're a little concerned about conditioning when they come back? Mm -mm. No. No, we fortunately have guys that like to play. You know, and I think you um, – they'll run. They'll, 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 they'll condition themselves. So no – no lectures about don't eat too much, that kind of thing. We're going to meet Mr. Treadmill on. Okay. Mm -mm. No concerns. Would you rather have the one more game before going into Big 12 play coming out of this? To get your legs back? Kids back? I don't know. I, 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 would, I don't think they're going to be in the gym. So, uh, I don't think it's uh, it's that big a deal with with this group. Some groups it is, but I don't think with this group. I mean, we got guys to get the shakes if they don't get, get in the gym enough. Do you see Eric not being in the gym for five or six days? No. 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 I'm no. surprised he hasn't moved in there. <laughs> he pretty much has. You, you know, um, same offense you ran last year, you're running this year, same offense you ran for 30 years or whatever. Um, is it spacing? Is it players? Why are you scoring more now uh, than you have? Competition? What, what, what is it? Probably a combination of all those. It seems like spacing has been really good with this team. Well, we've spent a lot of time with it, but I don't, I don't, we don't we don't deliver the ball when a ball needs to get delivered. If if we could deliver the ball on time, I mean, we would really score a lot of points. We we hold the ball too long. Is that a product of playing more together? Well, it's a that's a it's a product I think of working on passing the ball. You know, throw it throw it away from the defense. Don't don't throw it on the defensive side. Don't throw it at people's feet. Don't throw it over their head. If they put their hand out and say here, you probably ought to throw it there. You know, and we 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 probably overhandle the ball too much. Having said that, though, I mean, last year that's all you talked about. We don't pass it. We dribble it too much. We do. We we still do. Yeah. These guys just make more shots. Seems that your offense, the one that, the one that, that you like to run, is different guys with different roles. 
I, I can't picture you with a you know a 32 point a game score out there. I, you know, I think you might have wanted to try that last year with Taz or something like that. But it doesn't work in this offense. If you got to go share it, share the ball, like you say. I, I think we probably have more guys that can score with this team. I mean, Logan got 30 a game running the same offense, and he's five foot eight. And he got 30 a game. Um, multiple guys got in the 20s, 20, 25, 26, down to you know, down to 20. I mean, there were there were times I had. Two or three guys scoring 20 a game. It's an equal opportunity offense. I think that's what I think that's what they like about it. It's not it's not geared to throw the ball to the same guy all the time or have the same guy take the shot all the time. So you're going to have more people involved, and it, and it depends on you know how good guys are if. You know, if the guys are, I mean, they're good players, but they're not real good players, then you're going to have a lot, you're going to have a lot of um, equality probably. I mean, look at Jimmy. Look at, you know, Jimmy didn't, Jimmy didn't score in junior college, and now all of a sudden Jimmy's going to end up being a double-figure scorer. I would think. Um, paperwork stuff here has... The appeal been filed? Did you guys file that with for Jose? I'm out of it, man. You're out of it, okay. Yeah. That I've passed I've passed the baton. Okay. Were you surprised that it got denied the first time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think everybody was. But that was that was passed along. Shane, Steve had a lot to do with that. Compliance had a lot to do with that. Bob Huggins family Christmas like? Um, well, I guess by demand, uh, we, I have four sisters. So generally at one of the four sisters' houses initially. Sometimes, sometimes my, the, the brother in the middle, sometimes at Harry's house, but Predominantly, it's it's at my sister's, one of one of the four. Have any of your teams ever played on Christmas? I don't think so. I think we played Christmas Eve, maybe. That's as you. Listen, if 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 we if if we were, if if we got on Homer Simpson, we played it at, at Cincinnati. <laughs> We played at midnight. We 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 played. Yeah, we played on Christmas. I'm sure. Now, what have you gotten the um, the desired aggressive offensive traits out of Keetrian after two seasons? Kind of push him a little bit. Well, we we need him. You know, I mean, we he and I have had several conversations about we need him to. To, to, to one, run the show, but more importantly, to, to be able to score it as well. Now, he was a he was a pretty big scorer in junior college. Now, they played different. They played up and down a lot, a lot faster than what anybody at this level plays. But he's worked at it, too. I mean, he's put time in. He's shooting the ball way better than what he shot the ball before. Driver now too. Well, we want them to be. The more pressure you can put on the rim, probably the more times you get to the free throw line. When you look at his assist numbers from this year to last year, is it a simple? Is it a matter of just more guys making shots when he's throwing the ball, or is he? running a better offense, uh, so to speak. The assist numbers can be funny sometimes, I guess. Uh, he had the ball a year ago and had two guys who could 
probably make shots as well as virtually anybody we had here, maybe minus Deshaun. I mean, Taz and Sean's problem wasn't making shots. They could make shots. Prob the problem was so could their man. Taz and Sean, I think they were also your leading assist guys out of last year. I don't know how that would work, but... No, I mean, I we wanted we wanted Keedy to to grow into being um, a point guard. I mean, but we did the same thing with JC. We did the same thing with Deuce. I mean, they weren't they weren't they were probably more JC wasn't probably, but Deuce was. I mean, he was more a more a scoring point guard. JC kind of grew into that. Hmm. Have you, by and large, to this point, gotten what you hope to out of non-conference play as a whole? Yeah, probably other than probably other than one game. Yeah. How's Emmett doing? Um, getting better. Getting better, I think. I think what they ultimately decided the problem was was a deep uh, bone bruise, and it's getting better. I mean, he's he's feeling a lot better. I think. I think the goal is for him to start practicing as soon as we get back to practice and get ready for K State. When when something that happens in a game. It just it looked weird, right? Um, and then he gets checked out and all that. I think he played the rest of the game when he came back in, too, which is kind of remarkable when you think about it. But you have so many things going on. Real time, monitor, a player, and, and a knee and ankle, or whatever that could be hurting him. I, I, I've team. always had guys who played through a lot of things be it, be it sprained ankles, stubbed toes. Tweaked knee or whatever it is, fingers. They've always played. They've always wanted to play through it, <clears throat> you know. And then when practice comes the next day, they're not real sure about all that. But but they shouldn't be. I mean, they should be. They should be in rehab. That's that's the beauty of having this building is that we have rehab here. It's not like. Being in the Coliseum, where all we had was a was a tub, you know, it's it's a this is this is as good as any NBA team has. So I think probably they're they're a lot more willing, um, and I, and I think they believe a lot more in the treatment, which I think means a lot as well. Bob, in your playing day, did you ever lift weights? And when did you become an advocate of that? Yeah, I lifted. Um, I when I when I really started taking it really in earnest was when uh, Dr. Cruz was here. And I had I had some classes from Dr. Cruz, and it was, I mean, he's he's the guy who, he didn't convince me. He just he did a great job of I think of of teaching it, um, you know. And then we didn't we didn't nobody lifted much when Jody was here, um, and I went to Ohio State, and people lifted a little bit. And then I went to Walsh, and I saw the players. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, so we lifted a lot. And lifted a lot at Akron. Lifted a lot at Cincinnati, I think. Cincinnati is probably when actually, actually I called here, and I needed a strength coach. I was the strength coach before. And... and so I needed a strength coach, so I called here, and they said, hey, we got a great guy here, Mickey Marotti. 
And so I hired Mick. And obviously Mick has gone from basketball. He he got he got an absolutely incredible notoriety for being a basketball strength coach. Uh, I mean, a lot of it was. I think, I think if we had if we had thirteen guys, I think eleven of them bench pressed over over three hundred pounds or something. It was it was kind of it was something that had never happened. I don't think ever in college basketball. So Mick justifiably so got a lot of credit, and then moved on to Ohio State, which he's he hasn't left. But I've been blessed. You know. The guys, the guys that I've been able to uh, attract here have been Sean's. Sean's phenomenal. I mean, Sean is Sean is the, is is probably the best basketball. Well, he's not probably. He is the best basketball strength coach in the country. Uh, he's he, he's done it with several NBA teams. I mean, you think about getting those guys to lift as much as they play and as much as they travel. But they all love him, you know. They all they all give him credit for a lot of things that happened in their career, and I, and I think that bodes well for here, you know. In that, in that our guys know that he's he's dealt with pros, uh, so. And then I think it helps that uh, and when I I told him when I hired him, I mean, you tell us what you need, we'll get it. So we have. We've got everything, you know. When LeBron, LeBron made the cryo chamber uh, popular, we bought one. Uh, when Deuce, when Deuce found a light bed somewhere, I don't, still don't know where he found it, but he was going to the light bed, and I'm like, man, you don't need to be driving after a game out to somewhere else to the light bed. So we bought a light bed. I think if you look at at what we have from a from a strength and conditioning standpoint, and also from a restamp. Uh, a uh, uh, rehabilitation standpoint, nobody has anything like what we have. So, how much did you deal with the stereotype of basketball players shouldn't lift in the early days? What's the stereotype? Mm -hmm. But it was out there common at that point. I mean, early, way back when. When I was playing, mm -hmm. yeah, very much so. When I was playing, yeah. You know, with Eric, like you said, he's your most vocal leader. And the other day you said it's hard to get in a word sometimes with him. You know, personality-wise with him and with you, you know, why do you think he's come in and you two have worked so well together? Because he listens when I tell him to shut the up. He listens. I, I mean, he's... When I think it's getting to the point where enough's enough, I just tell him shut up, and he shuts up. There's there there's a there's a tremendous advantage advantage to people thinking you're at least as crazy as they are, and maybe more. It's a tremendous advantage. I think that was what Trey said. His first impression of Eric was when he got here in the summer. You know, how do you think that was at the beginning with, you know, him and those guys? With what are, are the guys that were here? Crazy. In, in some ways. He's not, he just, he, he enjoys, he enjoys playing. I, I think it's more, he talks a lot because he enjoys playing. He's not, it's not derogatory. It's just sometimes you get tired of hearing the same voice, you know. What are you guys doing for Christmas? You staying here? Or are you going? What am I doing? Yeah. I got to go to my sister's, man. Hmm? They cook? Oh yeah, yeah. They well, there's four of them. I mean, you get the you get a pretty good variety. Yeah, we, I mean, we we went to my mom and dad's before uh, my mom passed away, and then you know. My dad sure as hell wasn't going to cook, so he went to the girl's house too. So we just be, the thing became they they alternate, and everybody goes there every, every once in a while. Go to Harry's, but primarily that's that's what happens. 
you guys don't host probably hmm. have the biggest house i would guess right they they yeah we did once i think or twice i don't know something it, but it, it it's all around a game you know it's not um to, for to drive down here you know in the morning and drive back at night is that's that's a that's a good drive so we have we have hosted it i guess but it's been around basketball Um, I can back to end up for a second. Is it um, maybe fun as the right word? Informative to play without him a little bit? That your, the guy who's got the most minutes, you talked about probably hurts a little bit on defense, but you still want him to recover a little bit. And you can do it again. And find that happen for time for different reasons for foul troubles or matchups. The guys have no choice but to, to, to soak up minutes or make it work without him. Well, I mean, I think it's. Um Kobe, Kobe and Seth are are two guys that have have put time in here, you know, and have 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 worked hard at it. So, I think to give them, we needed to give them more minutes. This just gave us more minutes to give. That's all. What you see without him? Like you liked or didn't? Without Emmett? Yeah, Emmett. Practice and games. Maybe maybe it prevents from the first time. He's, he's, I think, without question, the most versatile guy we have on our team. Uh, you know, in that, um, you know, when he, he wasn't a very good shooter before, but he did a lot of things. He'll rebound it at both ends. He can defend a big or a small. And now that he's he's become a very good three-point shooter, before he scored it, you know, inside the circle. Now he can score it inside or out of the circle. He's our most versatile guy. And and he's also got more experience than anybody else. He's our most experienced guy. <clears throat> Jimmy talked Sunday about finishing through contact and some of the stuff that you kind of advised him there. How important is that for him and how difficult of an adjustment is that for him? I don't think it's much of an adjustment for him. I mean, it's. I think I think the year that he spent out there, I think probably was a lot more beneficial for his his perimeter game than it was the physicality. But he, he I mean, he knows about the physicality in this league. He spent three years in this league, so it's not like he doesn't know what's coming. Well, back to the strength thing. Strongest player you've had, pound for pound. I think it's just big guys, but is it the strongest guy you've had? Oh, wow. Strongest guy was, I don't know. They didn't. Curtis Bostic, Eric Hicks, Danny Fortson, D'Antonio Wingfield. Take your pick. Curtis was state champion kickboxer, state of the state of uh, Illinois. A colonel. He was state uh, in in. He was in Boston, I think, suburban Boston. But he was state champion kickboxer there. Lavertus Robinson was a state champion kickboxer in Illinois. Strongest you played with? Who's it? The strongest? Yeah. Fake was skinny. Mo, who were... Who's our strongest here? Yeah. I don't know. Sean would be better. Sean could answer that better than I can, but I would assume Jimmy. What about in your playing days? Uh. The equation. Probably Mo. Probably Morris. Mo was the the the, the thing that I always I, I kind of like to when somebody brings Mo's name up. We were getting ready to play Notre Dame and we did our whatever you know our practice thing and and then they came out and they come out with this big boombox. I mean big boombox. They're 
playing all this music and they're just kind of laughing and having a big time and Mo and I were Mo and I were coming out of the tunnel we you know, just went in and pra- showered stuff after practice and Digger said to uh, I guess he was talking to us we had only two there he said we're going to whip your ass tomorrow boys so with you know three or four minutes to go we're up 20 some and somebody shooting a free throw i don't remember who and mo walked over there and i'm like so i walked over because one i wanted to hear what mo said but uh, act acting like i was being you know peacemaker so mo looked over digger said hey digger digger didn't pay attention he said hey digger i'm talking to you he turned around and looked at him mo said we beat your ass today didn't we boy I'll never forget that <laughs> Yes, sir.